Welcome back students to today's lecture which is ninth lecture in this course. I have been talking about thermonuclear reactions, right. So, before discussing more about thermonuclear reactions which are the processes responsible for energy production from the stars and also the synthesis of elements in the whole universe. Before discussing more properties, let me quickly provide a summary, brief summary of the previous lecture. Okay? So, in the recap, I have discussed the ML relation, mass and luminosity of a star. Okay? It is linear and m is proportional to L to the power of 3.5. right? And then I have quickly discussed the salient features of Hubble's law, its isotropic nature, expansion of the universe and then remnants of 2.7 kelvins which is the echo of the big bang. 14 billion years ago, whatever radiation was created after 14 billion years now, when we are able to detect this 2.7 kelvin from the distance, distant objects that has confirmed that big bang happened around 14.3 billion years ago. Okay? And these are some of the salient features of uh, selected general properties of the universe. Then I started discussing the thermonuclear reactions and how many burning stages in stars, hydrogen burning, helium burning, then carbon, oxygen, nitrogen burning, silicon burning, S process, R process and P process and then L process. So, these are the 6 burning stages which constitutes the synthesis of majority of the elements in the universe. Okay? And the reason is because of the thermonuclear reactions and thermonuclear reactions can be divided into these 6 types. Each type will be discussed in detail in due course. All right? okay, so, let us start today's lecture. Let me start from the basics which you are very much familiar with. To maintain the flow of the course, let me quick, quickly refresh the concepts that you are very much familiar with. Okay? What is the source of nuclear energy? It is the mass defect delta mass n corresponds to mass n corresponds to nucleus. So, actual mass of the nucleus minus number of protons and mass of each proton, number of neutrons, mass of each neutron and the difference you know you are very well aware of that is mass defect. And multiplying the mass defect with c square gives us the binding energy. And nuclear reaction which is normally fusion of two nuclei, this is much more efficient than fission. And you know the basics of fission reaction, fission process when a heavy nucleus splits into two um, medium nuclei and emitting some more particles like neutrons and gammas, it also releases energy. That is the um, basic thing for the construction of any nuclear reactor or the production of nuclear power. All right? And you are all are familiar with the nuclear reactors based on nuclear fission. Where is the reactor based on nuclear fusion? Commercially, no fusion based reactor is available at present. Very interesting research is going on in the project ITER, which is the acronym for International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor. Okay, uh, located in France and if you are interested more towards computational engineering or scientific and uh, basic science oriented research internships, this ITER website please go through it, you will get many opportunities to do project works and of course also doctoral studies and postdoctoral studies many more. So, this is one of the important facility uh, for the fusion uh, based re nuclear reactor to produce the power out of nuclear fusion not from nuclear fission and this is the world's largest magnetic confinement plasma physics experiment. So, basically in ITER a sun is being created because sun you know it is a source of nuclear energy. right? So, we are trying to create sun inside the laboratory by using the magnetic confinement of the plasma. So, the basics of nuclear reaction starts like this. The reaction between 1 and 2 leads to the production of 3 and 4. This is a general representation of a nuclear reactions where, where all these numbers denotes some nucleides. The Q value of a nuclear reaction N is stands for nuclear 
the q value of a nuclear reaction is nothing but mass of the first nucleus and mass of the second nucleus minus sum of the mass of masses of third and fourth nucleus nuclides right and the difference in the masses is nothing but q value energy released in the nuclear reaction is the q value now it is not possible to measure the mass of the nucleus q value can be calculated by taking the nuclear masses because it is a reaction between the nuclei it is not reaction between the atoms so ideally we should take the difference in the sum of masses of reaction products and reaction uh, nucleus which are initiating the reaction right but it is not possible to measure the nuclear mass directly that is the reason when you try to calculate the q value of a nuclear reaction we go for the atomic masses we go for the atomic masses so mass of first atom mass of second atom minus mass of third atom minus mass of the fourth atom this is the atomic q value so qn stands for nuclear q value qa stands for atomic q value now using this well known relation mass of an atom is nothing but mass of the nucleus plus number of protons into mass of each electron because number of electrons and number of protons is same in a stable atom and this has to be considered binding energy it has to be subtracted from the sum of the mass of the nucleus and z into me okay now with this we can relate the nuclear q value and atomic q value atomic q value okay so the atomic q value is nothing but nuclear q value plus this expression plus the binding energies terms okay so finally you can say that atomic q value is the sum of two terms nuclear q value and delta be in general one can neglect the delta be binding energy correction it is very 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 small okay it is very very small however one interesting calculation let me present before you before that let me do a simple calculation of q value for you for example proton is interacting with the oxygen 17 emitting alpha particle plus 14 nitrogen can you please cross check the atomic number and mass number it is very important okay 7 and 2 7 plus 2 9 and 8 plus 1 9 17 plus 1 18 4 plus 4 14 18 18. so the conservation of nutrients and protons one has to do clearly carefully so how do you find out the q value of a nuclear reaction is equal to mass excess what is mass excess delta m that is mass of the atom minus mass number into atomic mass unit multiplied by c square this is a well known relation right so here mass excess of 17 oxygen plus mass excess of proton minus mass excess of 17 nitrogen minus mass excess of alpha particle right and i suggest you to download an app what is that international atomic energy agency if you type in the google play store um iaea you will see an app named as iaea okay if you download it you will get the values of mass excess and many more properties of each and every nucleus whose data is available at present in the literature okay and the one way is to calculate the mass i mean to calculate the q value is directly take the mass excess mass excess and this is equal to minus 808.81 for the oxygen this is a uh, positive value and for proton if you take 7288.97 minus for nitrogen 17 2683 -42 2424.92 all are in of course kev okay and this gives rise to 1191.83 kev what is this q value there is a another method to find out the q value of course you might be aware just for the sake of convenience i am discussing here using only atomic masses okay for example 1.007825 for the proton 
for oxygen it is 16.9991370 remember after decimal so many digits are very important in such calculations okay 4.002603 is the atomic mass of helium plus for nitrogen 14 the atomic mass is given by this number so no need to remember all these values okay if it is in the case of exam the values will be given and when you do the numericals i strongly suggest you to take the values from this app iaea okay and of course you have to multiply this with the 931.5 isn't it so this is also equal to 1191.85 kev you see either you can go for mass excesses or you can go for atomic masses okay this is regarding the calculation of q value another point which i would like to highlight regarding the importance of binding energy correction this correction can be neglected not every time okay when you come across positrons electrons with negative charge sorry positive charge okay for example the fundamental nuclear reaction for the evolution of universe is proton plus proton and this reaction you will come across several times throughout this course so please pay attention to this reaction in particular it gives us to deuterium that means hydrogen with mass number 2 and electron with positive charge and it gives rise to neutrino and if you do the q value calculation it gives rise to if you go for atomic masses mh plus mass of the proton and mass of the deuterium if you go for like this it gives you 1.44 mev but if you go with the nuclear masses if you go for the nuclear masses now i am not discussing method 1 and method 2 like this here i am seeing i am trying to explain you the importance of this binding energy correction term while calculating the q value of the nuclear reaction one can always neglect the binding energy correction if positrons are not involved to make make it more clear i am doing this calculation for you okay so q value if you take the nuclear masses mass of proton plus mass of proton minus mass of deuterium c square if you take it 0.93 mev because the kinetic energy is shared by positron and electron okay so this highlights the importance of taking atomic masses and nuclear masses while dealing with the binding energy correction binding energy correction so this is all about some basics of q value of the nuclear reaction and the calculations so i have discussed two different methods to calculate the q value of nuclear reactions involving proton on oxygen 17 both results to the same value both gives the same value and when nuclear masses and atomic masses are important in calculating the q value that is positrons involvement of positrons okay there you cannot neglect the binding energy correction so i have given you some hints please try to do on your own so that you can get a better idea but remember this particular reaction proton plus proton giving rise to deuterium positron and neutrino this is the fundamental nuclear reaction which has not been measured till now because of various challenges which i'll discuss several times when situation demands in the course okay okay so let us go forward the most important property or quantity related to the nuclear reaction is cross section the whole nuclear astrophysics course is lying on the understanding of this concept of cross section of the nuclear reaction what is the cross section of nuclear reaction i hope you are aware of this word cross section even then to maintain the flow of the course let me give you a quick idea about the cross section of a nuclear reaction because it is essential okay to find out how many reactions occur per unit volume okay when any nuclear reaction happens if you want to find out per unit volume per unit time okay per unit time it is missing here okay per unit time and per unit volume maybe within the star or when you carry out any nuclear reaction in a laboratory on earth 
it is important to see per unit time per unit volume how many nuclear reactions are taking place. To find out it is important to measure the cross section of a nuclear reaction. How to find out what is the basis of the nuclear reaction cross section calculation? Is it okay if we go for classical criteria or shall we go to quantum mechanical case? All those things I will discuss as part of this discussion. Okay? Let us see how cross section of nuclear reaction looks like. Classically, if you see projectile, P stands for projectile, T stands for target. Okay? And the radius of the projectile and the radius of the target. If you take the sum and take its square and pi into this value is nothing but area seen by the reaction. Okay? More area, more probability for the reaction to happen, is not it? If there is a target material and there is a beam coming in the particle accelerator, if this area is more than the particle beam, there is a huge probability. Inside the target water nucleus is present and the nucleus area if it is less than a nucleus volume or if you take in terms of a radius, if it is less than the particle incident particle radius, then the probability will be very less. Of course, some more parameters are also involved. Okay? I am trying to give you some general case of the classical treatment of the nuclear cross section value, nuclear reaction cross section value. Okay? So, the simplest definition is you go for the sum of the radii of target and projectile. In stars, when nuclear reaction happens, there is no meaning by saying this is the target, this is the projectile because both are moving within the star. So, there is nothing like a target and projectile, but whereas on earth in the laboratory when you perform the same nuclear reaction, we cannot create a situation kind of a situation where both are moving okay? because we have to accelerate one uh, entity and another has to be at rest, then only reaction can happen. So, that kind of situation within the star, it is not possible in earth's uh, laboratory. Okay? So, the nuclear reaction has to be carried out by placing the target at rest mostly and particle beam which is moving and which is generated using the particle accelerator. So, all those things regarding the measurement techniques and how many types of accelerators can be available which are relevant for the nuclear astrophysics, I will discuss in due course. So, for time being, let us try to understand the concept of nuclear reaction cross section. Okay? So, this is a classical treatment. For example, if I go for proton plus proton, classically it is 0.2 bond, okay? centimeter square. In terms of meter square, it is basically 20 power of minus 28 meter square, is not it? So, 0.2 bond is the cross section for proton plus proton. And if I go for, see all this is classical treatment, remember all this is classical treatment. Proton plus uranium 238. Immediately I jumped from proton to uranium 238 in terms of target. Projectile is proton only. Then you see the change in the cross section from 0.2 to 2.8 bonds. Order is same, it is bond only. Now let me go for another combination of target and projectile. Uranium 238 plus uranium 238, is not it? Then I am getting the same order, same bond, but instead of 2.8, now it is 4.8. Okay? However, because it is a quantum mechanical process, nuclear reaction cannot be treated via classical physics that is well known to all of you. So, one has to go for quantum mechanical treatment and quantum mechanically how to calculate the cross section. You know what are the parameters that comes into picture. Okay? So, this is the relation for calculation of cross section of a nuclear reaction based on quantum mechanical treatment. Okay? pi reduced wavelength square, okay, the square of the reduced wavelength, where the reduced wavelength is given by mass of the proton plus mass of the target tile, I mean target divided by mass of the target, basically it is giving some kind of a reduced mass. Okay. Finally, it is giving me reduced wavelength and Planck's constant, mass of the projectile and energy value. And what is this L? I will discuss in future. Okay. So, this is a general description for the quantum mechanical treatment to express the cross section of a nuclear reaction. All right? Now, another important thing in understanding the cross section is its dependence on the energy of the 
projectile, energy of the projectile. Let us try to understand this in a better way. Now, you see if I consider the same energy for the projectile say 2 mega electron volt, it could be any radiation it is ok. Now, if the strong force is involved in the nuclear reaction for example, proton on nitrogen 15 then the order of cross section you see it is 0.5 bond. If electromagnetic interaction is involved then you see alpha plus some example is being given here helium 3. If electromagnetic interaction is involved for the same energy of the incident projectile so for the same energy of the incident particle that is projectile immediately the cross section is reducing to some micro bond and if you go for weak interaction like proton plus proton which is giving me deuterium, neutrino and positron. I hope you are aware of this representation right. So, if I write down like this in the parenthesis this is a projectile I mean uh, this is a target this is a I mean this is a target ok and this is a projectile and this is the product nucleus and this is the ejectile right this terminology you are aware of. If weak interaction is involved not strong interaction or electromagnetic then the cross section comes down to 10 to the power of minus 20 bond. As I said experimentally it has not been measured yet then how do we know this? We have a strong theory supporting this cross section value and why it is not possible to measure the cross section of proton plus proton reaction? What are the experimental challenges? With beautiful numbers I will discuss in due course alright. What is the essence of this slide? Cross section of a nuclear reaction is not only dependent on the energy of the projectile, but also the nature of the interaction involved in the nuclear reaction. So, nuclear reaction can happen via three forces strong, nuclear and weak sorry electromagnetic force, strong force and weak force. Of course, gravitational force does not come into picture for the nuclear reaction is not it. So, depending on the nature of the interaction out of these three strong force, weak force and electromagnetic force the cross section value dramatically changes. Remember I have fixed the energy of the projectile constant in this case. So, as part of the discussion on cross section I have shown you the classical treatment and I have shown you how it depends on the nature of the interaction as well. So, it is important to keep it in mind because it is the cross section of a nuclear reaction which is the fundamental quantity in this whole course. I hope you know the basics of quantum mechanics. What is the fundamental uh, quantity in the quantum mechanics by knowing which you can get almost every information in the field uh, wave function. So, if you have wave function in hand you can do many things in quantum mechanics like this. In nuclear astrophysics by knowing the value of cross section only you can understand the role of nuclear physics in, in explaining the features of the universe like synthesis of elements in the universe and production of the energy from the stars alright. Ok, so let us continue. Let me do some mathematical calculation or some kind of derivation of cross section of nuclear reaction nuclear reaction. For that what are the quantities that comes into picture my dear? If you assume the beam projectile beam whose energy is A and number of particles in this beam say n B ok all these are particles and it is falling on some target material ok which is having number of target nuclei say n t and with respect to the incident direction this is the one and the particles if they are undergoing some kind of scattering or if it undergoes some kind of reaction number of product nuclei or ejectiles if you say they are getting detected by detector whose front 
region is defined by df is equal to r square d omega, where d omega is the solid angle submitted by the detector at the reaction point and r is the distance between the detector and source. Okay. Now, here sigma is probability that an interaction take place and n b particles per unit time particles per unit time t covering the target area A and n t total number of non overlapping nuclei. This is important assumption total number of non overlapping target nuclei okay. and if I define like n r by t is number of interactions per unit time which is also equivalent to say number of emitted E stands for emitted interaction products per unit time. What is this R? Number of reactions per unit time. Every reaction is giving some kind of uh, uh, you know products. So, that I am uh, clubbing into N E then sigma is defined mathematically as N R divided by T okay, it is divided by N B by T into N T by A. Now, you have to pay attention regarding the dimensions on both sides units. Okay. So, what is the number of interactions taking place per unit time divided by number of incident please understand the concept behind this uh, formula number of incident particles per unit time see ultimately the unit of the cross section we need to understand carefully and uh, this nt corresponds to number of target nuclei divided by i mean number of target nuclei within the beam okay not divided by so these terms gives rise to the unit for example if you take this number of interactions per unit time this unit time unit time gets cancelled this is a number this is a number and this is also number finally area is coming as a unit that is centimeter square centimeter square and we will use this general definition to describe the reaction probabilities we will use this concept to describe the probability of the nuclear reaction in astrophysical plasmas and also in the measurement of the nuclear reactions in the laboratory. Okay. So, with this basic idea of the nuclear reaction cross sections, let me continue the discussion on nuclear cross sections and some more parameters in the next lecture. Thank you so much for your attention. See you in the next lecture.